home. Please come in and study God's Word with us. We're delighted to be with you today and share with you our program that we have called From House to House. The ladies and I would like to have you spend some time with us in the Word of God, and we're trusting that it will not be time spent in vain. We're going to begin a brand new series, and this is going to be a 12-part series. And so we hope that you'll be able to take in all of it, but if you can, at least a portion of it. And we trust that it will be something that will make a difference in your life as it has mine in preparation. We're filming, in case you're curious, in the, in the beautiful home. Uh, our program has the backdrop of this beautiful home of Tony and Sandra Walker. We appreciate their hospitality and we appreciate ladies that participate in our programming. Well, ladies, it's time for us to get our Bibles up and begin to share the word together. And so I'm going to ask you to go ahead and turn in your Bible. And so you will have it ready in the book of Acts, chapter 17. And we're going to look at verse 30. So you can be finding that as I explain to our listeners uh, what we're going to be talking about. And that is the subject of repent. Repent. This is a word that you're not hearing spoken of very much today, it seems, at least here in the West. Uh, it's a word that maybe some people just don't want to hear, and yet it's in the Word of God very much, and it's a command to us all that we need to repent. So we're going to be talking about uh, repentance uh, because we know that that is the main lead that brings the dynamic works of God that follow. But there must be that threshold prepared of repentance so that God's blessing then can come. His spiritual reign then can fall and cause the vegetation to grow or the spiritual uh, edification to come forth is when hearts have been made right with God and they have repented. You say, well, Carol, who's this series going to be for? Is it going to be for just the unbeliever? Well, you know, I believe this issue, ladies, of repentance can benefit us all. Whether we be a, a believer or whether we're talking to someone that's an unbeliever or whether we're talking to the church at large, all three categories need to face their times of repentance um, as I read the Word of God, it's commanded over and over. I think about how, ladies, in the book of Revelation, in chapter 3, there the Lord spoke to seven churches. Seven churches. And they do symbolize, as well as being historical, they symbolize the, 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 um, the kind of the outlay of what the churches down through history would be like. And we're pretty much of the opinion that we are in that last stage, that last church, the Laodicean church, the seventh one that the Lord spoke to. But consider this, my listener. Out of seven churches, there were four of them that the Lord had to rebuke and to command that they repent. So you see, the church isn't perfect. Of course, you knew that anyway, didn't you? In fact, some of you won't even go to church that are listening to me because you say, well, there are, there are a bunch of hypocrites down there. Why do I need to go and join them? Well, Yes, the church is a place for us to go and be challenged to have our life renewed in the Lord and to grow in the Lord and to have our life changed. And so, uh, no, the church that you see or you might want to attend isn't perfect, but hopefully we're on our way, right? And repentance is what 
takes you continually from one degree to the other in your development, in your relationship with the Lord. But out of seven, can you imagine there were four of them, the Lord had to command them to repent. There was one of them that the Lord said, there are things that I have against you. The Lord was very displeased with that particular church. There were only two out of seven that the Lord commended and praised for their walk with God. And that happened to be Smyrna and Philadelphia. That's in the, the third chapter of the book of Revelation, ladies. If later you want to check that out, because that isn't my... Uh, the, the thing that I mainly want to bring forth today, but I just want to stress the fact that we as believers have no excuse and say, well, I repented once, so I never have to repent again. No, we need to repent from time to time when we grieve the Holy Spirit, when we are disobedient or we fail or, or we are neglectful. Um, we need to come to the Lord with a repentant heart. Unbeliever, you have no idea what you are missing. When you continue on in your way and you're unwilling to repent, you're missing out on the goodness and the blessings of God that would mean so much in your life if you could simply humble your heart before the Lord and repent. We're going to explain to you more about what repentance means. Individual believer, I hope that before the series is over, there will be areas the Holy Spirit will shine a light upon in, within the, the realms of your heart. And you'll be able to relate to the Lord in a way that He can take care of that. Repentance will take place and there'll be newness, newness of growth, newness of life develop within you. Certainly, the church at large of our generation needs to repent because I don't think we're all that we need to be. I know in my own life, I could do more. I could do better. There's always room for improvement, right? None of us have completely arrived. Even Paul said in his last days, he was still stretching forth, reaching forth to apprehend what Christ was offering to him. Well, you may say, uh, well, what do you mean, Carol? What do you mean by repent? What do you mean by repent? And why should I repent? Well, to repent is a command of God. And let's read that now, ladies. Um, and I've already asked you to turn to Acts, the 17th chapter and the 30th verse, and from the King James Version. We're going to read, and it says, And the times of this ignorance God winked at, but now commandeth, all men everywhere to repent. So, this is a command. This is a command. This isn't something, you know, you ought to do. I think you ought to do. God says, well, if you get around it, no. God commands who? He commands all men, everybody, and everywhere, the scripture says, to repent. This means without exemption. And this also means without excuse. Sometimes people don't repent. What they do instead is they make a whole bunch of excuses for why they are as they are, they live as they live, they do as they do, or they don't do what they ought to do. They just make a bunch of excuses. But our excuses will not max, mask our face when we stand before the presence of Almighty God in the day of accountability. He, we will, he will not tolerate a mask over us of excuses because you know the scripture says all things lady so it says all things are naked and open before the eyes of him with whom we have to do you would read that in Hebrews there isn't a thing that you can cover up with do you remember how Adam and Eve in the in the garden they realized that they had sinned and in their sinful condition they sensed their nakedness and where before they weren't aware or conscious of that, it wasn't a problem. And so what did they do? They went and they sewed the, the leaves from the trees, the fig leaves together to cover themselves. Mankind, when he feels guilty about his wrongdoing, he usually wants to find a cover-up. But in the eyes of God, before whom all things are naked and open, there's no cover-up that'll hold up. God even took the... Um, 
cover up that Adam and Eve used and he provided for them the clothing from the skins of some animals to cover them. Well, only the shed blood of Jesus Christ can cover up our sin and our shortcoming. Isn't that right? And the scripture says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God in the book of Romans. Isn't that right? All of us. None of us are perfect by nature. So this message, I think, will be fitting for us all, ladies, no matter what level of walk we have with God or if, if we don't, my listener. Repentance is what God commands all men everywhere, and it's a command. I would like to share with you a little bit of uh, instruction on repenting, just in a simple, a simple method. Um, maybe not deeply theological, but something simple that I can offer to you, especially you that are listening to me, and you feel very uh, guilty with perhaps your lifestyle, things that you're allowing to go on in your life and haven't done anything about. What are you going to do about it? Well, it's amazing what Repentance will do in your life, it's like opening a door to a grand room that's well furnished by the hand of God. Repentance turns the key, opens the door, leads you in to what God has prepared for those that love him and those that seek him. I would suggest, on just a simple level, of what repentance means it means to have a sense of conviction about the wrongdoing in your life, whether it's things that you're participating in pres presently or not doing presently or things from your past that haven't yet been submitted to God with a heart of repentance. You, you sense this conviction in your soul and you know that things aren't right. Well, recognition is, is a good place to start. You see, the conviction of the Holy Spirit first comes and prepares us. And then we begin to look at ourselves and recognize, hey, I've got a need. I need to do something about this condition in my life. And then as, after we move from conviction and recognition of our need, then we need to have a sense of regret and a sense of sorrow. The scripture says, Godly sorrow worketh and leadeth unto repentance. So there needs to be this not only feeling of conviction that you've done wrong, but there needs to be a regret for having done wrong. A sense where you feel bad about what you've done or what you have failed to do that you should have done. And mainly that should be aimed to the fact that you know you have grieved the heart of the Father. You know, we are all His creation, and what His hopes and desires were for His creation, I'm sure is a far cry from what we have amounted to be. And when we sin, we not only sin against ourselves and sometimes others, but we're sinning against God. Remember when David had grievously sinned and done things he should not have done, David the psalmist, King David, he said to God, I believe it's in the 51st chapter of Psalms, he said, <clears throat> against thee, Lord, only have I sinned. He recognized that he had sinned against God. Yes, he hurt individuals in the natural realm by his sin, but he knew he had grieved the heart of the Father. Yes, it grieves the heart of the Father when we go our own way. The, the prophet Isaiah said, All we like sheep, we've gone astray, and we've turned every one to his own way. And this is what gets us into trouble, is going our own way. Turning aside and going on our, our own way and not willing to do what the Heavenly Father would want us to do. So you need to have a sense of regret and a sense of sorrow in your heart once you have felt conviction and recognized that there's things that need to be made right in your life. I think of Judas. You know, Judas, he repented 
of having betrayed the Lord. Remember after he went in and he sold the Lord for his 30 pieces of silver? That later, apparently, he got to thinking about it and the guilt moved in and he realized what he had actually done for filthy money. And he went back and, and my understanding is, is like he, he tried to get the priests to take it back, put it back into the offertory, and no, they wouldn't accept it. They said, that's blood money. We don't want that blood money. And no doubt he probably threw it down in the floor. I wouldn't be, be a bit surprised. He had, he had a sense of sorrow and regret for his betrayal of Christ. But you know what? He didn't complete his repentance in that he did not change his life. He did not change his life. You see, with repentance, there's some stages to your repentance. And you can only go part way sometimes. And it's not complete. So we must move on from there. We need then to move on in to a further degree of repentance. He repented, but he did not change his life. And what did he do? He went out and, and hung himself with his regret. You can feel regret and sorrow and realize you have offended the Father, ladies, but yet maybe never open your lips and say to the Father, Father, I have sinned. Father, forgive me. Oh, Jesus, forgive me. We need to actually ask for forgiveness. You know, <laughs> have, you, have you ever had a relative or a loved one, someone that you relate to very closely, maybe it's someone right in your household, and when they do wrong, they act real guilty, and they're under conviction of that, and their behavior, you can see the effect of their guilty conscience, but they will not humble themselves and actually say, will you forgive me? I'm sorry this was wrong, what I said, what I did, what I failed to do. They don't have the humility to actually ask you to forgive them. I know people like that in my own family tree who uh, they'll act guilty, they'll act like they're sorry, or maybe even try to compensate and make up for it some way, but they cannot humble themselves and open their mouth and just simply say, Please forgive me. So you must move on into that level, ladies. It's not just enough to recognize you're wrong, not just enough to feel sorry that you did wrong, but you need to literally ask for forgiveness. Then, <clears throat> if we uh, consider this word repentance, the Crudence Concordance, ladies, it says uh, that word means a complete change of action. We have to have the desire to do what? To do a turnaround. Repentance is not just feeling sorry you got caught. Maybe even Sharon's sh uh, uh, shedding some crocodile tears because now the pain of the consequences of what you've done is coming into full view. But to repent is also moving on into the level of being willing to turn around and go the other way. That's what repentance means, to turn around and go the other way. It makes me think of when you're driving, at least here in the States, <clears throat> and you realize you have either passed the intersection you meant to make a right or a left turn, perhaps, and you missed the intersection, so you go further on down the road, and you're looking for a place to make a U-turn, so you can go back and turn around and go back the other direction. If you're ever traveling on some grand highways and freeways, sometimes you pass the off-ramp that you should have taken. And you realize it later and you say, oh my goodness, I'm going completely north and I should be really headed south. So you're looking for that next exit to get off on and make this U-turn and go the other way. Spiritually, it's the same thing. You need to make a spiritual U-turn with your life if you're sincere about your repentance. Jesus put it this way when he dealt with the woman that was taken in adultery and they brought her to him and they wanted to stone her. And they were condemning her and just no doubt with uh, licking their lips in a sense with eagerness to see this woman taken in adultery stoned and they could have a part in that action. But Jesus wasn't ready to stone her he wanted her to repent and he wanted to be able to forgive her. Just like you, if you're listening to me today and you're guilt-ridden, 
Jesus is just waiting, not to stone you, but he's waiting for you to repent so that he can help you be brand new and lift that load, that old soggy garment you're wearing of guilt off of you and give you a new garment of praise. We want this series, ladies, to not be like a rod I'm beating people over the head with, commanding them to repent, but we want it to be an offer of hope of deliverance from our bondages. We don't want to be condemning, we, but we do want it to be a warning. Because if we're not warned, no telling what could happen to us. So I trust you can receive this message from me with that heart that I feel a desire as the Lord would desire that you come to repentance for the benefit in your own life. Not just because someone told you you ought to. Jesus said to that woman, when he said to her, woman, where are your accusers now? Because when Jesus said, you that are without sin, you cast the first stone. Well, they all had sin in their life. So those men walked away. They dropped their stones and walked away. When they all disappeared, Jesus said, well, where are your accusers? She said, they're gone. No man, Lord. No man, Lord. Let's look at that. Ladies, as we turn quickly to John 8, verse 11, and we look in the King James Version, and it says, <clears throat> she said, no man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. That's the spiritual U-turn we've got to make. We've got to make that decision. I'm going to turn around and I'm, my lifestyle, I'm going to go the right way now. I've been going down the wrong road. I'm going to turn and go down the right road. Go the right direction. Go and sin no more. Um, Yes, there may be times after you have repented that you fall again. Get up, dust yourself off, go back to the Father, repent again, but be sincere, be genuine. And where in your weak, ask the Lord to heal you, give you strength, to deliver you, set you free. If you're dealing with things that are just seemingly more than you can deal with to get victory over in your life, go for prayer help. To, to the house of God or where people that know how to pray and get a little God and will pray and agree with you, encourage you and strengthen you in a change of life. And the Spirit of God, when you make that decision to do so, the Spirit of God will then back you up. He will undergird you. You know how the mother eagle, <clears throat> when the, the little ones, she's teaching them to fly, what she has them, you know, come out of the nest and they begin to fall and flutter, and they're not sure of themselves, she swoops down and goes underneath. That's what the Holy Spirit will do for you. You say, well, I don't think I can live it, Carol. I don't, if I repent, what good will that do? Because I'll just go back and wallow in the mud again. What good will that do? Well, you see, when you make that decision, you make that choice, like the mother eagle, you're, you're going to get out of the nest, you're going to try your wings and fly and live a new life through God. Not with your strength, but through God, depending on God. And the Holy Spirit will just come and undergird you and catch you and aid you and give you the divine ability to walk a godly walk. Yes, we grow from being an infant in Christ to a, to a toddler, to a child, to more maturity. So we can't expect too much of those that are babes, but God is going to aid you and strengthen you if you are sincere in your repentance. Go and sin no more. And <clears throat> let's look, ladies, at Acts 17, verse 30 again. I want to read it this time from the Amplified. And it says, Such former ages of ignorance God, it is true, ignored and allowed to pass unnoticed. But now, I want you to notice the word now. But now he charges all people everywhere to repent, to change their minds for the better and heartily, to amend their ways with abhorrence of their past sins. Three things I want you to notice. Three steps in this. In that particular verse in the Amplified, it speaks of us changing our mind. It takes a change of mind, repentance. And then the willingness to heartily amend our ways. And then we need to abhor or hate our past sins sin. Don't make excuses for it. Don't cover it up. Don't justify it. Call it what it is and you will find greater victory. If you call your ugly sin, ugly sin and hate sin, then you will find you will be disconnected from the power of that sin as you despise that sin. 
The scripture says to despise that which is evil and cleave to that which is good. Take hold of the good and hate that which is evil. And none of us have been perfect. We've all had to come and bring our need to the foot of the cross and ask the Lord to cover our sins with his precious blood that he shed at Calvary because the life is in the blood and that life that he gave for us at the cross makes it possible for us to live anew and will give us eternal life. Father, I ask of you now for our listeners that you will help them to have this humility to ask for you to forgive them. Give them genuine repentance of heart and the will and the desire to have a new life. And we ask that you will undergird and support and enable them with your Holy Spirit to walk in newness of life from this day forward as they ask you to cleanse and make them whole. In Jesus' lovely name we pray and thank you. Amen. Be with us next program as we share with you further on the subject of repentance as to the subject why. Today we dealt with what. What. But next time we're going to deal with the subject of why on lesson number two. God bless you till then. I pray. Amen. And when I come before the presence of the most holy I shall look upon his face out through my veil, for it's the blood of Jesus I'll be wearing. It alone can cover up. Program copies available. Full set of 12 lessons on CDs, $34. DVDs, $44. At $3 for shipping and handling, no COD. Original Carol Brooks song album. Audio cassettes, $10 each. CDs, $14 each. At $3 for shipping and handling, no COD. For orders and support gifts, call toll-free 1-866-777-4748 or call 1-619-445-0751. For more information, please contact Carol Brook Ministries Incorporated. P.O. Box 1909, Alpine, California, 91903. On the World Wide Web, visit carolbrookministries.com. Email carolbrook at carolbrookministries.com. Prayer line numbers are 1-541-592-4539 or 1-619-401-9389.